Okay, let's talk about decision making in relation to group size, okay? It's something that long range shooters do a lot of in the course of load development at 100 yards, you know, trying to get the best groups and precision from our guns so we can hit targets at long range. Um, but there gets to be a point of diminishing returns in that effort, and that's what I'd like to talk about. All right, it starts with understanding the nature of dispersion, okay? What I mean in particular is that every five shot group that you fire is going to be different, okay? Even when it's the same ammo and the same gun. You know that if you've shot the same ammo for back-to-back -back groups, the groups are all a little bit different, sometimes a lot different. And that variation in group size is unavoidable, and it's sometimes pretty large in relation to your group. Um, you know, if your average group size is one MOA, you're going to have groups that are once in a while as small as half, and once in a while as big as one and a half, okay? It's a variation around the average. It's very natural. Okay, so with that in mind, okay, the, the problem that we get into with hand loading and looking for the best groups is it's a signal to noise ratio problem. The signal we're looking for is what's the best group from like, you know, a different seating depth or powder charge or tuner setting or whatever it is we're doing to try to make our groups better is the signal we're looking for and the noise is the variation that we see in group size that's natural. And if we're looking for a signal that's within the noise, you can't really find it, okay? Um, that's why that whenever you do a load development, when you start, a lot of times you get a lot of the value in the first 20, it's like the Prater principle, you get 80% of the value out of the first 20% of a load development effort. Because in the beginning, when you're trying a wide range of things, you can rule out things that obviously don't work because the signal is large enough. You know, the signal, some of the groups will be so bad that you know you don't want them. That's a big signal. And so you're making valid choices when the signal's above the noise. But after one or two rounds of that, when you've ruled out all the stuff that obviously doesn't work and you're onto the stuff that, that seemed to be better, that's where you can start to really spin your wheels going down rabbit holes, trying to make decisions looking for signals that are too small within the noise, okay? Instead of that, what my advice is, once you've done the first 20% of whatever a normal load development arc would be, stop, you're done. Forget about going down all the rabbit trails of resolving small signals that you don't have the resolution to see anyway. Instead, load everything the same as something that worked better. Load all the same, now go to the range and start practicing. Learn to read the wind, deploy your kit, see where it fails, fix it. Learn how to use a ballistic solver without making mistakes. And by the time that guy who's done spending time at the bench comes out, you'll wipe the floor with him in a competition because you've been learning to shoot.